In this little short video, I just wanted to bring up a couple uh, scenarios that you might run into when you're working with the project files, um, because uh, I can't provide literally every asset or cache that was created. There's going to be some missing links um, in the project files, and you're going to want to know how to easily kind of get them back to where they were uh, in the first place. So. The first type of scenario, and this is an uh, example uh, from uh, chapter three, um, you may open up the project files or you may have followed along and created them on your own, but if you open up the project file and jump inside your geometry here, you might see this network is looking pretty good, but then you run into an area where there's an exclamation point, and at the exclamation point, um, literally nothing can happen. If I say hide other objects, um, you know, you know, we're going along and doing our thing. You can see if I go up, up to this null above this file cache, it's going to start cooking down here and then create our geometry. What the file cache is doing is if we, if I load up the, if I bring up the uh, parameters here, the file cache is simply just trying to read the file cache that I created when I saved this file. And since that doesn't exist in the project file that you're creating, what you're going to want to do is just grab it and you can either turn off load from disk and that way it'll cook it directly from this node and just sort of almost act as if it's not there. You could bypass it. That's a similar thing. But if you wanted to load from disk and have your file cache operating, um, you know, the same way, you just uh, would say load from disk and then click save to disk and then it'll begin to start the file caching process, um, which should pop up in just a second here. Starting to render out those frames. And if I go over here to my lesson 03D, you can see here that it is creating a cache folder and creating that um, wallhead cache that is being referenced by uh, the project. So now, without letting that go all the way through, I'm going to just cancel it. So I didn't let that fully cache out all the way, but you can see that I've cached like the first 20 frames or so here. And now um, this wall uh, head cache is uh, when I click um, load from disk, it's no longer upset at me um, that we don't have anything here. And you can see that when I go to the split and follow this all the way down the node tree, if I go all the way down to the end of it, you can see that it's not having any issues. If there's any, um, it looks like I was clicking around a little bit quickly here and got some extra exclamation points. That's just because I tried to interrupt cooking. These should all be good if I go up to this VDB right here and then pop down here. Yeah, those are all cleared up. So that's just how you clear up a missing file cache. Now, another scenario that might occur because we were doing this course with some uh, free assets off the internet, we don't necessarily have license to provide those assets along with the, uh, the course material. And so we're sort of um, hoping that you can find them on your own. An example of that would be something that comes up in, I think it's, uh, let's see here. Yeah, in chapter eight, we do a rigid body example. And right here, this is sort of what this project looks like when you open it. You have your rigid body sim and your fracture geometry. And when you look in the network, it is all just a bunch of exclamation points. And really the strategy here is to sort of just trace the flow chart all the way back up to the top to find where the... Um, where like what's wrong and I've left a little note here like saying to load your model in here under file one there is no file located in this geometry file in the project file in the lesson files going back out here to lesson 8b there is no geometry here so if I actually copy the geometry that I was going to use into it let's go grab that real quick I'm going to just drag my geometry into this project temporarily. And then under our file, if I click um, to load our file in here, you can see, I'm just going to pick this geo, hit accept. It should load the geometry in and you can see it's right here. Now, if I just hit spacebar F to frame that up, I should be able to follow this down. Um, down the network until I run into maybe this file cache and then I would want to do the same thing. But if I go down to this merge, it will think about it for a little bit. It's reducing polygons. You can see it cooking down here, getting all caught up. And again, this is a, uh, an asset off 3d scans. And I think that they're, um, free assets, but 
you know, I was able to get it just by going to the website and downloading it. And I would just suggest that if you wanted to follow this example, exactly polygon for polygon or whatever, um, you'll want to go there and download that asset yourself and just load it in this way. You can see that this cooking operation is taking a little bit. Um, which is why we have this cache uh, right here, obviously. So we don't have to wait for it to do this every single time we load up our project. Um, but once it gets there, we will have, uh, we'll sort of be able to, you know, continue on down our flow chart down through our node tree to, um, you know, achieve the same result as we do in the example project. All right, so after about two minutes of some intense fracturing action, if I hit spacebar F, you can see I have our geometry here. Then our file cache is going to be broken still, so I'm just going to click Save to Disk just like we did previously. Highlight it, and we're good. So now if I continue to follow this down the tree, let's go down to our low-res pieces. Let it cook through this loop. It should be clearing up all the exclamation points. You can see it calculating down here. Um, yep, through that loop, it looks like it has successfully kind of refractured our geometry the way we want it to. Um, click that guy, it's created our constraints. Lower his pieces packed, cool. Um, and then this is our DOP import, and here it would be a file cache that sends it out to get simmed. So you could run this one again, say save disk and click uh, load from disk and it would you know continue to do its thing. Um, so that's just sort of a rough overview of how you can um, kind of get your projects. If you're trying to follow along or you're having an issue following along, needing to use the project files, but running into these sort of red exclamation points and nothing seems like it's working, this is sort of how you kind of work your way down the node tree and get everything back in working order. So I hope that, that was helpful and um, I uh, will catch you in the rest of the course.